What is going on YouTube? Derbador to Weldor here coming at you with another video. And it's the video you've all been asking about. It's the rig tour of my brand new to me 2019 F-150. Here we go, guys. So here it is. My new to me 2019 F-150. I bought this because several reasons. It was a great tax write-off, and I made a lot of money, and it was just time to get a new truck. It was coming up on that time. As much as I love my 79 and my 74, uh, it was unfortunately the time had come to break down and park those and buy a new truck, our newer truck. So I got this. This is a F-150 XL four-wheel drive 5.0 10 speed i got it for a 27 grand from carvana which i'm being told is a really good deal so we'll see so far it's been a fantastic truck i've already put over 10,000 miles on it and that didn't take long it's probably closer to 15,000 now as much as i drive this thing for work but i'll show y'all how i got it set up and rigged out there is actually a dedicated video specifically to the skid and how the skid is built. I'll go over some of the skid here in a minute, but the skid has also got some modifications done to it. You can see by the light bar up there, and I'll show you all that here in a minute. So to be like my 79, of course, it has to have a winch in the front. I got this kit from Rough Country. I know people got weird opinions about Rough Country and their equipment, but I just didn't feel like fabricating anything. Wow, what a shocker. I just totally don't want to fabricate something after fabricating something for people all day. Because the first thing I want to do when I come home from 12 hours of welding and fabricating is to do more welding and fabricating. Wow, what a shocker. So I've got this kit and it integrates into the stock bumper of the truck because I love the look of this truck. I love the grill. I love the bumper. I didn't want to go with some ugly monstrosity on the front of it. I wanted to keep it the original look. And so that's why I went with that Rough Country hidden bumper kit. It's a synthetic 8,000 pound winch, which is more than enough for this truck and what I do. Fortunately, I have not had to use it. The day will come where it will be needed and it is an investment that will certainly pay for itself in the future. Like any truck I own, one of the first things I do to it is the LED headlight upgrade. Because halogen headlights suck and I'm not a peasant. So of course, not even a month of owning the truck, this happens. I don't even know where it came from, how it happened. It just showed up one day on the truck. So this is why I have an XL, not a King Ranch. Because... It is still a work truck at the end of the day. I don't want to cry over it because of a little ding. Oh my God, my King Ranch got a dent in it. So now my favorite part of this truck is the way these doors work. This is literally the coolest thing right here. It is awesome. I didn't even know that this was a feature where, you know, the back door would swing back like that. And of course, like any super cab truck, it instantly the back seat becomes a toolbox. It's just a part of the gig. So back here, I have my search and rescue pack. That's not important for welding, but it is back here in case I get deployed. I got my fireproof pad here for my knees in case I'm working on something. I got my Optril Papper kit in here because gotta invest in that guys eventually you need to get yourselves a papper you don't want to be breathing in those fumes for the rest of your life they're bad for you got the helmet with the hard hat because i got msha stuff i got to deal with all the time and there are sites i go to that require that because of those rules they those rules have paid for this truck Bandsaw, my bucket of random safety equipment and stuff, TIG rods, my um, easy cut track torch right there from by Flame Tech Scorpion. Can't believe it took me that long to figure that out. 
There's some flux core wire hiding under there. So yeah, back seat, basically a toolbox. We go over here to our cross bed box, tractor supply boxes I've learned are just garbage. That's getting replaced by a weather guard box. Milwaukee tape measures, Milwaukee ink saw markers, more tape measures because tape measures are life. The flag for sites where I'm required to have a flag for MSHA. Many, many, many random measuring instruments. Marshmallows so you can hear longer. Tire plug kit, ladder, step stool, gas. More Milwaukee tools over there. Open this right here. Fire blanket, welding rods. That box under there that has my TIG, my TIG kit in it. The quick connects, the stinger, and the ground. Over here, argon, seventy-five twenty-five. Positive, negative, one ten, oxyacetylene air with these nice high flow quick connects. Oxygen, acetylene, the air compressor, the fire extinguisher that I am required to have. And back behind it, I don't know if you can really see, there's a sticker on there. Cost me money to put a sticker on there just to say, ta-da, I am safe. I Not only do I have to have a fire extinguisher, it has to be a certified and inspected fire extinguisher. And I have to have a sticker near it because MSHA. And a no smoking sticker near my auction acetylene because MSHA. More tools. This one's a disaster, but I'll just sum it up. It's got all my torches in there and some and the grinders and chain fall and several other hand tools, stuff that does not get used as much as it should be. Over here, there's our grinding wheels. There's some more hand tools. This is all the other Milwaukee stuff. There's Milwaukee tire inflator under there. Um, there's a map torch in there for, I, I don't even know why I have a map torch in there. I bought it cause I wanted one and now it's like, I don't even know why that's there. I have a oxyacetylene torch on the truck. But anyway, it's there. Levels, cord, very important to have some utility cord. Because you're going up places, you're in the ceiling of places and whatnot. That's great for tying off equipment and then hauling equipment up to you to where you're working. And I and utility cord is way better than paracord. Just paracord's stretchy and it's too thin and it cuts your hands as you're pulling stuff. But just some cheap $5 utility cord from Amazon makes life super easy. The Milwaukee fan for fume extraction. 50 foot 220 extension cord. The Hypertherm PowerMax 45 with the high access kit for cutting and gouging because that is life. Without it, I don't know what I would do. My Arc Reach suitcase because my Trailblazer's Arc Reach, the lifesaver to have that. I'm not walking back to the Trailblazer all the time to change a setting when I'm wire welding. So it makes it just a seamless system, just like I'm MIG welding or wire welding in the shop. It is fantastic. Then we go over here. Got my Miller 30A spool gun, which I found you can get the old version like this with the hexagonal top. Dirt cheap on eBay with a WC24 controller. I got this whole setup right here for $800. You know why? Because it's missing the top cover. And when people lose this top cover, they're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And then they throw it away on eBay for dirt cheap because Miller don't make that top cover anymore. I am going to, when I get the time to sit down and do it, I am going to custom fabricate out of maybe some stainless, a nice little cover there for it so I can start using this. And there's my Milwaukee worm drive saw off my Diablo steel blade on it. My refrigerator with all my sodas in there so I'm not constantly making trips to the gas station all the time when I should be working when I, all I want is a soda. Under here, we got our Milwaukee M18 slash M12 chargers. There's two of them. They actually plug in. These are the car chargers. So these are actually taking 12 volt from the truck to charge these two batteries here. A very worthwhile investment. I've never in the last 
how long have I had this truck? Like four months. I've never had to charge these off of the Trailblazer because when I get to the job, all my batteries are charged. These six amp hours are on here. And then back there, I don't know if you can see them, there's two five amp hours hiding right in there that are always charged as well, ready to go, ready to just grab it, throw it on a power tool and get to work. One of the additions to the skid, since I made the skid build video, is my amber caution lights up there and work lights. They're all wired except for the amber caution lights. They're all wired into the trailblazer. I got this nice conduit type wiring right here and it has your positive and your negative inside of here done in red and black. So it's like double insulated. It looks really, really nice. So the only thing coming out of the trailblazer is that cord right there. I got everything nice and tidy in there. The only thing other than that cord is the inline fuse and that's it. Like I said, it's just that black wire coming out the trailblazer. So it looks really, really clean. And I found this awesome weatherproof 12 volt switch. See my wire going in there. I don't know if you can see, it actually lights up. You turn it on, turns on the work lights up there. So I have rear, left, and right facing work lights. Makes a big difference. Even if it's not pointed directly at what I'm working on, it's just ambient light. It makes it easier to work around a truck. Being a man who is obsessed with the dent side pickup trucks, the old 70s Ford pickups, I was pleasantly surprised when I got this truck to see how simple under here really is. Ford has learned their lessons. They understand what customers want. They want a simple, reliable engine. And that's what this 5.0 Coyote is. As it's, going to, it's going to be as simple as it can be, considering it's the modern age. It's not the twin turbo EcoBoost nonsense. Those who want that can go get that. People like me who are simple, Ford has the 5.0 Coyote. And it's simple. It's actually simpler under the hood of this than it was under the hood of my 89 F-150 because Ford got rid of that whole stupid two-part intake Plymouth nonsense. This is what that original 5.0 in that 89 should have had was an intake like this. Why Ford didn't do that back then, I don't know. But this right here, simple. There's all your coil packs, there's your spark plugs, there's your injectors, there's your fuel rail, there's your air conditioner lines, there's your wiring harness. I'm pretty sure that's the computer back there just because of the amount of wires going in there, if I had to take a guess. There's your brake booster. There's plenty of room in here. Like there is so much room in this. You take this air box out, you can sit right there. You couldn't do that in my 89. But in this, 2019, 30 years later, Ford finally figured out what their customers wanted and gave it back to us. Gave us what people like me wanted. A simple truck with a simple engine. No thrills, no nonsense. You can get to everything and still work on it. It's amazing that this even exists. And my favorite feature on this truck, I didn't even know that you could still get this. What? That is the coolest feature on this truck is manual windows and manual locks. Look, there's no buttons to lock and unlock everything. There isn't even a key fob for this truck. Look, it's just a normal key it has the chip in it of course but it's just a normal key <laughs> how cool is that and one feature that i had to add to this truck oh, of course washer fluids low be quiet yeah and i'm running out of gas that little info center tells me everything i already know one feature is very important to all work trucks especially if you're going to be on OSHA and MSHA controlled sites. One thing you'll notice 
is you look in the rear view mirror, there's a bunch of tools and equipment back there you can't see. Depending on what site you're at will depend on their rules. Generally assume you're gonna have to have a backup alarm. These backup alarms are not rocket science to install. Anyone can install them with some rudimentary knowledge. We crawl up under here. There we go, backup alarm. And there goes our little wire up to the reverse light. And it self grounds right there. That's it, that simple. Now it does have a backup camera right there, but MSHA rules require that if you cannot clearly see out the back, you have to have a backup alarm, even if there's a backup camera. And I'll tell you, one of my favorite features about this truck is you close the door. You hear that? Nothing. There's nothing to hear. It's so quiet in here. I can have the trailblazer and air compressor running at the same time and I can still be on a phone call with a customer and hear them. It's amazing. It is wild. The insulation in this truck is awesome because I've had a long day. It's just nice to get into a nice quiet truck and not have to listen to all the other noises around me, turn on the radio and drive home. The truck is like this peaceful island in a sea of just chaos. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. I'll put a link in the description to the video that specifically talks about the skid and how the welding skid is constructed. Thank you guys and y'all have a fantastic day.